Welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast with your host, Breakup Bestie, aka me, Kendra. Breakups are hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Each week, I will be taking you through a different topic as it relates to breaking up, healing from heartbreak, growing in your single life, dating, and getting back into happier and healthier relationships. The goal of this show is to provide support, hope, tips, and to remind you that above all, this too shall pass. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast. Today's topic is a very important one, and the best way I can describe it is I believe it is probably if you asked everyone going through a breakup, what their biggest fear is, and their biggest fear most of the time is that they'll have to see their ex with another person. And I know this is probably the hardest part of going through breakups, this fear of having to see your ex with someone new. But inevitably, as life goes on, one day this happens. And you either hear it through the grapevine or maybe you see it on social media that your ex is in a relationship with someone new. And I know this feeling so well. Your stomach drops to your feet. You feel absolutely sick sick to your stomach. You just want to curl up in a ball and disappear. Your worst fear coming true. So I get this a lot and people say, well... You know, it maybe hasn't even happened yet, but they say, I don't know how I'm possibly going to deal with this once it happens. But on today's episode, that's what I'm going to be talking about. What do you do when this happens, when your worst fear after a breakup comes true? And before I get into what do you do when this happens, the first thing I want to say is, Try to put yourself into a position where you don't have to find out about this in the first place. If you think about it this way, life goes on. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, things pass, things change. So inevitably, this is going to happen, and you know how much it's going to hurt. So you're in a much better place not knowing. So the ultimate goal would be to not have to know that they're in a new relationship. No matter how strong a person is, no matter how long it's been since a breakup, no matter you know how much you think you're over it, it's going to sting to see that. So I want you to try to first focus on not being in this position where you are torturing yourself knowing that. And this is why not playing investigator is so, so, so important. And I talk about this a lot on Instagram and in past podcast episodes. But for those of you that aren't familiar, the investigator is the person that is, you know, obsessively looking at social media, asking their friends if they've heard anything, you know, still trying to like inject themselves into their ex's friends so they can like get intel just anything that you're doing that's trying to get information about how your ex is doing. So we want to drop that role as much as possible. I mean, it's very hard not to do it from time to time, but as much as possible, we want to avoid that. And the way I see it, there are a few very simple ways to shield yourself from this sort of news. And, you know, is this hiding from reality? Maybe. But is it important and smart to do? 125 million percent. Yes, it's very smart to take these few simple steps so you don't have to be faced with this fear before you're ready. And yes, there will be a time in the future where you see your ex with someone and you're going to be really happy for them. And you're going to say, wow, I'm super happy they found someone like we clearly weren't meant to be. And that's okay. Like you will get to that point, but try to protect yourself as much as possible, especially in the beginning. So the first thing that you can do to avoid this is obviously not be connected to them on social media. So you're not having to see that stuff like right in your face. You don't want to be like at work or, you know, with family and all of a sudden you pull up social media and you see like your ex is in a new relationship and you start sobbing because you have to see that. Another thing I would recommend, and I talk about this on in the no contact rule and in the detox checklist in my course 
is ask your friends not to share that kind of news with you. Say, you know, even in the beginning, like when you are in a position where you're feeling strong, you, you ask them, hey, I'm still really hurt from this breakup. Even if I ask you about my ex, I'd really appreciate if you don't share information. I think innately it feels really good to like have gossip and have information and people probably want to share that with you, but they're not trying to do it to hurt you. They just, you know, want to share that with you, but just ask them not to. I think most friends can understand that, but this is again how you can avoid knowing, seeing that your ex is in a new relationship. So start with that. Now we're going to move into what do you do if that does happen? What, what do you do if maybe you didn't block them on social media and you see that your ex is with someone new or someone says, hey, did you hear so-and-so has a new girlfriend or whatever? So the first thing to keep in mind is remember that people heal so differently from not just breakups, but people deal with hard stuff in their lives so, so differently. And especially if it's maybe a guy who's moving on really quickly, there are actually biological differences in how men and women handle breakups. Men tend to not come to terms with the tough emotions that follow after a breakup until much later on. So they might not feel phased, so it might feel appropriate for them to get into a new relationship, but you just never know how someone is coping. Some people cope with breakups by pretending that they didn't happen and they just suppress their feelings and they try to go on business as usual. So they might get into a relationship kind of fast. Some people might cope with the pain by just jumping into a rebound relationship because they have so much pain that they don't want to deal with. So they just like bury it into someone new. Some people cope with breakups by staying single for an extended period of time. Some people cope by posting super happy photos on social media. Other people cope by posting, you know, sappy quotes on social media. There's, you know, there's not really like a correct way to go through a breakup. It's really just what works for the person. As the breakup bestie, I believe there are good ways to go about it and I won't say bad, but less optimal ways to go through a breakup, but that's just me and my coaching and my, you know, and my personal experiences, but people just go through traumatic events in very, very different ways. Like people handle grieving and death in different ways. People handle job losses in different ways. So you just really can't, like if someone breaks up with you and then is in a new relationship super quickly, I think the most thing, like people say like, well, it's very clear he like, I didn't mean much to him. And that's just not true. It's just how people are coping. And you're not going to be able to hear like that backstory as to why they decided to get into dating. Because number one, it's not your business after a breakup. And number two, it's just you're never going to get that kind of information from someone. So I think especially with social media, we see like this very curated version of someone's life. And it has us make assumptions that we say, oh, clearly they're doing fine. No one's posting crying pictures on their social media. That's just not how Instagram and Facebook work. So first thing, keep in mind, people mourn, grieve, cope very differently from, you know, person to person, from relationship to relationship. So you just never know. So you can't make those kinds of assumptions. The next thing, and this one's going to be hard, but instead of like, feeling like you have to believe this right off the bat, I just want you to hear me say it because sometimes just hearing an outside person say it is helpful. You cannot take it personally. You cannot take it personally. I know how personal it feels when someone breaks up with you and then you see that they're in a new relationship. I know that so much. I have been broken up with because the guy doesn't want to get married and then I see him or have kids and then I see him engaged and you know, then get married and then his wife's pregnant. I've seen that. I know how much that hurts and I know how personal it feels. My thoughts during that were, I wasn't good enough. If only I was like skinnier or taller or had different style or a different job, like then I would have been good enough. 
But the at, at the end of the day, that's just not true. It just didn't work out because it wasn't supposed to work out. And I'm able to see that now. So it feels when someone does that, when someone starts dating again, it feels like they're, you know, I'll use me for an example. When that happened, when they started dating again, in my head, it felt like they were saying, screw Kendra. I want to make her so miserable and I want to hurt her feelings so much that I'm going to start dating someone new. And I know we don't like explicitly think that, but that's how we feel. When in reality, that's not what happened. We broke up as a human being. He started seeing someone new. I'm sure, yes, you always think about your ex in certain situations, but I don't, he wasn't saying like, let me see how much I can hurt Kendra today. That's just not how it works. People are just going about their lives again in very different ways than maybe how you see it. I've shared this, this quote on the podcast, but my, the, my favorite quote I've gotten from my dad is that everyone's doing the best they can with their current thinking. And most of the time, no one thinks about you as much as you think about yourself. So your ex isn't like out there plotting, thinking about how they can hurt you. They're just going about their lives in a way that makes sense to them. So you cannot take that kind of stuff personally. It's not because you weren't good enough, pretty enough, skinny enough, successful enough, whatever enough. It's just because it wasn't supposed to work out. I wanted to pop on here and interrupt the episode for a hot second and remind you that if you are going through a breakup or are still struggling with a past breakup, I have a step-by-step system to help you heal your heartbreak. I know oftentimes after a breakup, we feel completely blindsided and totally paralyzed and have zero idea how to move forward. With my online course, I take all of the guesswork out and show you exactly how you can move forward in your life and let go of your ex. I can promise you there is an easier way to go through a breakup, and it costs a lot less than what you're probably already spending trying to feel better. To learn more, go to HealYourBreakupCourse.com, and as a special offer to my incredible podcast listeners, use the code PODCAST for $25 off the course price. Now back to the episode. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about and discuss and see that an issue comes up is falling into this comparison trap. So I don't want you to fall into the comparison trap. And this trap can manifest in a couple different ways. The first way I see this is you see that your ex is dating someone, so you automatically feel like you need to start dating someone. You want to like your ego, I should say, your ego wants to prove to your ex that you're not that hurt, you're nowhere near as hurt maybe as he is. So you feel the need to start dating, jump into a new relationship and, you know, prove to him, to yourself that you're okay and you're not bothered. Don't do this. Those are the kind, that's the kind of thinking, especially if you act on that thinking that will lead you into a relationship solely out of loneliness or out of spite or out of ego. Those tend to not be the most successful relationships, as you can imagine. And you're not doing it. You're not doing the right thing for the right reasons. So you really should check your motives on that kind of stuff. And then I think the more painful part of this comparison trap is when you catch yourself comparing yourself to the new girl. This is obviously very natural to, you know, as someone who's in a relationship, I, you know, as someone who's I should is married, I have a hundred percent compared myself to my husband's exes. I have, you know, while still in a relationship compared myself to previous exes, new girlfriends, like it's just a natural part of life, but this can be taken to the extreme as with any thought pattern. And you can really start beating the crap out of yourself that you're not, you know, as good as this perception of the new girl. So to counterbalance this, and this is something I got from my mentor, I used to, you know, be really quick to criticize myself. And so what she, you know, once I started doing this a lot, she started saying, okay, once you say something negative about yourself, you need to say two positive things about yourself. So that's what I want you to do. If you get stuck into that comparison, if you end up on her Instagram, I want you to then write something down about yourself that's positive. This will be a good way to break that negative habit. And it'll also reinforce to you like 
you are good enough, you are, you know, perfect as you are, and you will find someone that will appreciate that, that you deserve. But there's no benefit from looking at the new person. And sure, you might do this out of, you know, I think we've all done this and say like, well, I'm better than her. And, you know, these certain ways. Sure. That's like, something that's something catty that we all do that there's no harm to but if you're going to use the new person to like beat yourself up with that is not a productive thing and that will not help this process of going through a breakup i also want you to make that list that i've talked about in past episodes where you write down everything you didn't like about your ex and i keep talking about this but this girl on my instagram this week put it so well she said I'm going to do the opposite. I do the opposite of a gratitude list where I write down all the things that bugged me, that peeved me, that just I didn't like about the relationship. And then I want you to remember that all of those things are still there with your ex. And so this new relationship, it's not like you got, you know, a not so great relationship. And then this new girl is going to get like a dream relationship of your, like of the perfect version of your ex, that stuff is going to follow into the new relationship. So as a reality check, remind yourself of all the things that you didn't like. And remember that she's now dealing with that. (laughs) It doesn't just go away, especially if it's only been a short amount of time. So we tend to look at photos on social media and think, wow, she's getting the most perfect relationship she, you know, is getting all the things I didn't have. That's just not true. It's she's getting the same relationship, the same guy that you had. But at the end of the day, I know this situation really, really sucks. I know this situation really, really hurts. It's your worst fear coming to life. It brings up a whole bunch of insecurities. And I like to think of it as like a second wave of a breakup. First, you have to mourn that he's no longer in your life, and then you have to mourn like that they're in a new relationship. So this is a really tough time. And because of that, I want you to really, really practice like some extreme self-care and healing. So go back on this podcast and listen to, I can't remember the episode number, but the episode where it says what to do right after a breakup listen to that episode if you haven't already. And I want you to practice all of those things in that episode, because like I said, it's a second wave. So you should be treating it like the beginning of a breakup and really leaning on other people, taking really good care of yourself, talking to people on a daily basis, if not seeing them, getting good sleep, exercising, journaling, and really focus on the fact that this is going to be hard and you need to protect yourself, protect your heart during this period. Be really, really nice and gentle with yourself during this time. And remember, even though it feels sometimes like the like feelings can physically like kill us, they can't. They're going to pass, but don't pick at a fresh wound by continuing to look into their relationship through social media. Honestly, if it helps, block both of them. That way you don't have to look at either. Like make it super easy on yourself. And if you find yourself in that position where you're like obsessively thinking or looking at it, do a pattern interrupt, call a friend, go on a walk, do anything that you can get rid of that obsession for a short period of time. And just remember, you can't control anything past the tip of your nose. I love the hula hoop analogy like I can't control anything outside of my hula hoop so remember all you can do is focus on yourself continuing to you know it's no it's going to be normal to like vent about this to your friends and stuff but if you're just continuing to harp on the fact like I can't believe you found someone new I can't believe this I can't believe this all it's going to do is just keep reminding you and it's going to keep feeding that obsessive cycle of thinking about it and it's just really not going to serve us so if you are going through this I want to give you a big virtual hug through this because it's, it is really, really painful. And just remember that sometimes I know my advice can come across as, as harsh, but my goal is, you know, not only to be supportive, but my most important goal on this is to get you to a point where you can feel empowered and you can feel happy without them being in your life. So my first and 
first and foremost priority is to give you tips and sometimes like harsh truths to remind you of that. So sending you love. I always love and support you guys, but um, sometimes I just need to give you the hard truths. Speaking of hard truths, next week on the podcast, I have a very exciting guest on the show. It's the very first time I have interviewed someone for this show, so I'm very excited to give you a little hint. It's going to be all about the male perspective during a breakup. So I will see you guys back here next week. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you loved it, I hope you'll leave me a review and share with your friends. If you're interested in learning more about my course, Heal Your Breakup, where I take you step-by-step through my entire healing process, you can find more info at my website, breakupbestie.com. And if you're new, don't forget to join our private Facebook group so you can connect with other women going through the same thing and seek support. You can search Breakup Bestie Support Group on Facebook to join. Lastly, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I share new tips and support every single day. You can find me at your breakup bestie. Most importantly, hang in there, stay connected with loved ones, be nice to yourself, and remember, it's all going to be okay. I promise.